steps. There's this. There's plenty of interest in more hotels. Yeah, I know. Isn't that coincidental? Yeah. Not really. Is there only two? Is it really two? It's just anyway. Coincidental. That's nice. Yeah. None of them are full service. I think it's a plan. What time is the uh, event yeah, starting? Yeah, it's voicemail, I think, yesterday. Uh, uh, it's like today. I don't know if you guys have been here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we don't have our little fancy things today. We're not going to have. Guess not. We don't have our Hello. No, we don't. We don't have screens. Oh. We don't have screens. We'll just talk green right Thanks for noticing. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we could have just looked yeah, up there. Not. Have a I'm going to hold off for just a second before we get started because uh, our vice chair noticed that we don't have any screens at our desk. They might be, but they're not here. We don't have microphones, so we'll be hopping up and down. You were the one that picked up on that? Yeah, I could have.
Way, internet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Lucinda. Uh, I mean, we can turn around. Right. We can turn around. That's the way it used to be. I get to harass a dog. You know? right, right. I've got a hole in my big toe from oh. <laughs> harassing my dog. I love her. Actually, I tried to break up a fight between the two males. And I tried to you know, put my foot in the middle of it. They wouldn't die. It was all over, but the fight was over a carrot. But one of our corgis, you know, two of the corgis are 14. I don't know. It's too. 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 It's
Okay, perfect. Hi, John. How are you? Good to see you. Thank you. Okay, let's get started. The Design Development Review Commission is made up of volunteers with expertise or interest in historic preservation and design. We generally meet on the second Thursday of the month to review cases. Staff at the Commission are our urban design and historic preservation staff. They are available to answer questions if you have them, but please do not interrupt proceedings if you do intend or do need to speak uh, with one of them. The meeting generally proceeds with the staff calling the case and describing it. I will call for the applicant to come forward afterward to add to the basic description of the request if necessary or if the applicant wishes to do so. If so, the applicant should keep the presentation to 10 minutes or less. The commissioners will then have the opportunity to ask questions. At this point, I will ask if there is anyone in the audience who wishes to speak for or against the proposal, audience comments shall be kept to two minutes per person. If there is, the applicant will have an opportunity to respond and this rebuttal shall not exceed five minutes. In most cases, we will make a decision tonight after all information has been presented. If your case is denied, or if you feel that our decision was made in error, you and anyone withstanding have the opportunity to appeal it within 30 days of the decision. If you plan to speak about a specific project, you must have signed in. The sheet is at the back of the room. Also, and so that members of the public understand, commissioners are under strict instructions to avoid discussing DDRC meetings and applications without members of the public or with or with each other outside of these proceedings to avoid ex parte communications. If you wish to speak during the course of these proceedings, please stand and raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth in these proceedings? Uh, staff, could you call roll, please? Mr. Bocknight? Mr. Broom? Here. Mr. Daniel? Ms. filler -Welt? Here. Mr. Wynn? Here. Mr. Savory? Here. We have a quorum. Great. The DDRC utilizes a consent agenda for those projects which require DDRC review, but which meet the guidelines and typically require no discussion. If anyone wishes to discuss an item on the consent agenda, I will ask that you speak up after the consent agenda is read, and we can pull the item for, uh, for discussion onto the regular agenda. Staff would please read the consent agenda. The first case on the consent agenda is 1328 Landing Street. <clears throat> Pardon me. This is a request for a certificate of design approval for a preliminary certification for the Bailey Bill. It's an individual landmark. And the second case is 2249 Wayne Street. This is a request for a certificate of design approval for new construction in the Elmwood Park Architectural Conservation District. And we also have the approval of the July minutes. Very good. Is there anyone who wishes to take an item off the consent agenda for discussion? If not, could I please have a motion from a commissioner to approve the consent agenda and the meeting minutes? Second? Second. Second. Have a vote, please. Mr. Bachnight? Yes. Mr. Broom? Yes. Mr. Daniel? Ms. Fuller-Wilt? Yes. Mr. Wynn? Yes. Mr. Savory? Yes. Motion passes. Great. Could you please introduce the first case? The first case is 911 Washington Street. This is a request for certificate of design approval for new construction in the City Center Design Development District. This is a case that was before you a couple of months ago. I think it was in June. And the applicant has gone back to address several of the uh, concerns and, and some of the guidelines from the, the previous presentation. And Craig Otto is the architect who is here to present the project. And I'll just let him come up here and get started. Hello, I'm 
Craig Otto, architect for the project. Thank you for seeing us again. And I uh, appreciate your deferral from our last time. And uh, since then, Lucune and I have met a couple of times, talked many times on the phone, sent stuff back and forth, and have worked together very well. And I very much appreciate, sincerely appreciate her input. And uh, I think she has definitely made this a better building as a result. Um, if you notice, uh, I'm not even going to reference too much back of what we presented last time. I'll just talk about what we're presenting this time. We have, a, again, a five-story hotel, the first four stories of which are mainly brick. Uh, only the fifth floor is all stucco, except, as you can see, the, uh, the entrance tower and uh, facing Washington Street, as well as the uh, tower facing Lincoln Street, which are sort of duplicate towers. Those are stucco from, the first, from above the first floor onto the top to give some contrast to the, to the materials on the exterior. The colors that you see are, are somewhat representative of what we intend to do. The brick is a gray brick with gray mortar, and the stucco is in, uh, planned to be a, a limestone type color, sort of an off-white uh, color. All the uh, window frames, the, the uh, storefront sto and the um, uh, windows on the first floor as well as the windows above are all a clear aluminum finished color. Um, the coping and um, cornice around the top of the entire building is a, is a sort of a charcoal black um, to give it that new modern look uh, rather than what maybe in the traditional sense of this building would be more of a white color trim. So we are trying to make the, the, the building has a somewhat traditional look to it, but we've taken and made some of it look a little more modern by the colors that we're using uh, and by some of the shapes. We've addressed a number of Lucinda's original concerns about the uh, vert verticality of the window treatments, um, the materials at the windows with brick. We have brick bands on both sides of the windows going all the way up both sides. Uh, a brick header course over the top of the soldier course, as well as a sloped brick sill underneath the bottom of each window on the, on the upper floors and as well as the, uh, and the first floor as well. Um, and at the stucco, we've got the same sort of complementing that the brick trim. We're doing it with stucco around the windows that, that are in the stucco wall. So we're giving, getting the same effect, but contrasting it with the light, smooth material versus the brick that obviously has a lot of uh, texture to it. Um, the back two sides that are not facing either any street are only facing the parking lot. We've reduced the amount of brick uh, simply to conserve on the budget, save some money. Uh, the higher you go with brick and, and such, it becomes more expensive. So we've got, we're just continuing the stucco around the back two sides. We are bringing the brick around the ends of the building so that when you're driving down Washington or, or up Lincoln, you will see all, almost all brick. You'd pretty much have to drive around to the parking lot to see the, 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 where we've got more stucco versus the brick. Um, the the uh, cornice at the top, at the top of the parapet wall is continuous all the way around other than at the, at the corner entry where it does pop up higher. We've got a minimum of a four foot parapet wall, so all of the mechanical units on the roof will be screened because we'll have small mechanical units as opposed to, to large uh, sort of fresh air type systems that, are, that can be to eight feet tall. These, these units that we're gonna have are only gonna be about four feet, maybe five feet tall. Because they'll be centered in the building, there would be no way to see them from any street with the parapet wall and the projection of your view. Um, and you can see the canopy on the back, that's got a drive through canopy for two cars wide. It's, uh, again, more of a modern uh, look. That's, that's actually uh, based on the prototypical holiday, uh, holiday Inn type um, canopy at this point. Um, so, and then we, as you also saw, there's a canopy on the front facing Washington Street. Um, our civil engineer has been working with the city for encroachment permits for the uh, uh, canopy, as well as a, a handicap ramp that will be coming off of um, on the right end of this building, you can see the, uh, the in the rendering, you can't see the handicap ramp. It's strategically located behind the Corvette there on uh, Washington Street. But uh, there would be, a, there's a ramp there. You just can't see it. And it's on the floor plan as well as the site plan. So we do have handicap accessibility at all the entrances except for this one on Washington, which is three feet above the ground. Actually, maybe as many as three, three and a half feet. So there was no way to build an attractive ramp uh, in that vicinity. Mm -hmm. So they simply, uh, folks simply go around to the, to the right corner and head to the back door or to the side door. Um, so that rendering uh, depicts very well our, what our intentions are with the brick and stucco combinations in the tower. The, 
the, the very corner tower, which is the tallest element on the, on the building, was, was designed specifically based on Lucinda's recommendation that we have a little more of a corner presence. And even though the entrance is, is one bay off the corner, we, we brought the tower up and changed the window design and get, did the, the, the larger storefront on the bottom as well. Um, and by the way, I'm here representing the owner, Mr. Casey Udani. He's, he's here tonight. And uh, that's actually going to be his office in the corner. So he's, he's got that grand office. Um, so I think that gives you a good overview. And if you have any questions of me about it, I'll be happy to answer anything you have. Let me, before we move to any questions from the commissioners, ask if there's anybody here that wanted to speak in support or against the project. Nope. Great. OK. okay. Uh, any comments, questions? I have a question um, regarding parking. Yes, sir. Off, off street parking or off site parking. The, the rendering you're showing me with cars parked on the left hand side, that's all the City of Columbia Police Department, is that correct? Or is that a combination of public and City of Police? Do you have a site plan uh, on the screen? There you go. Um, we, we have no, uh, all, all of the parking that we're developing and that we're going to use specifically for the hotel is on site as far as what fits on site. We have 52 parking spaces on, on the property. We're not planning on using the, the public parking on Lincoln Street. We Obviously, if patrons want to use the metered spaces on Washington Street, they're allowed to do that. But the remainder of the parking spaces that we'll need is 52 to 55, um, would be catty corner across the street in the city parking garage. And that has already been uh, negotiated with the city and is approved for use for this property. So the owner has, has, does have um, access to all those parking spaces that are reserved for the hotel. So there are well more than 100, uh, 100 parking spaces combined. All right, thank you. Other questions or comments? Uh, Craig, I think this has vastly improved since the last time that we saw it. And I, I think it's a uh, testimony to the, the value of uh, DDRC and staff and the architect working together well to improve the project. I think it's much more, much more in line with the intent of the design guidelines. So uh, I, I think it's, it is uh, an effort and work well done. Um, I'm wondering on the, and I, and I, looking at the rendering, <clears throat> uh, I'm glad to see the push and pull in the facade. I think that the balance uh, between uh, something that's monotonous and something that's potentially frenetic is just about right. It's got restraint, but it's got interest as well. What, what is the difference in, in depth? What's the difference in plane between the stucco projections and the brick projections? It looks like it's several feet. I, what, what is that actually going to be? The, the two projections facing both Lincoln and Washington, one's brick, one's stucco, those are out at the same, on the same plane, three and a half feet okay. from the brick behind it. Mm -hmm. Now the corner tower um, actually projects out a little more than the back wall. So there's about a foot and a half or two foot difference between the stucco and the corner tower on, on both Lincoln and Washington. And what about the, is there, are the windows in the brick recessed at all, typically? In, in the main, yes, in the, yes, they are. Actually, I gave Lucinda detail, and as I recall, they are either five or six inches recessed oh, from good. the plane of the, of the trim brick or the, the accent brick, the soldier stacked courses on each side. Mm -hmm. Those project out a half of an inch, and then the window frame is about five or six inches behind that brick. Right. So there is quite a, quite a depth there. Um, there isn't as much depth at the stucco because the stucco is not right. as thick material, but I think, again, that gives it some contrast. Right. Yeah, I agree. I, you know, I'm a little, I, I, I wish that there were more um, uh, activity on the facades that turn in towards the parking because there will be, even though they're not on the street, they'll be highly visible from the street. But I think that there's enough interest and enough texture in the facades that uh, face Lincoln and Washington that it probably, in my opinion, it, it uh, will carry the building well enough in terms of its uh, presence on the street. It seems like the rendering uh, is showing the topography significantly flatter than that corner actually is. Not that I, I, I don't personally have great concern about it, except just that I think it may have a little bit different kind of 
character from what the, uh, in terms of the way it sits on the site, from what the rendering shows. Is, is that right? That is particularly on Lincoln Street. I think there's a pretty significant embankment I, there. I, I would agree. Uh, it, to a certain degree, I, I, you, you know, the height of the building above the grade immediately adjacent to the building is pretty accurately re represented in that there's about a three to three and a half foot difference between the finished floor and the ground. Mm -hmm. But when you, and, and on, on Washington Street, I think it's fairly accurate as well. Right. Lincoln Street, it is not. Um, there, I don't think the, the person doing the rendering understood that there is a, a three or four foot or, yeah. or more uh, grade drop. There is a new sidewalk on, on Lincoln Street, uh, which is visible in the rendering. Uh, that would be a little lower in elevation than what you see here. Um, there's also, you know, there's some artistic license here. So there's a couple of power poles not shown, one of which unfortunately is at the corner. Right. But there's not much, you know, we can't do anything about that. Thank you. Any more comments or questions? Wonderful project. Looks great. Thank you, Mr. Wynn. I applaud your, uh, the changes that have been made between staff and yourselves. Yeah. Well, as I said earlier, and I was sincere about it, um, Lucinda's done a great job making suggestions, um, never telling me what to do, mm -hmm. uh, but, but making suggestions. and. Uh, Yep, and we and, and I and I and I'm I'm very pleased with the results as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Very good. Anything else? Would someone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Um, <clears throat> regarding to 911 Washington Street, um, I I would rec I would recommend the approval of the request, providing that the Conditional upon details be deferred to the staff, including the following. The rooftop mounted utility equipment screening, if necessary. Refinement of the design of the upper facade of the tower. Streetscape improvements such as sidewalk design, trees, landscaping, irrigation, and street lighting. There are seconds. We have a vote, please. <clears throat> Mr. Bachnight? Yes. Mr. Broom? Yes. Mr. Daniel? Yes. Ms. Filler Wilt? Yes. Mr. Wynn? Yes. Mr. Savory? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, next case, please. The next case is this is 1233 Washington Street. This is a request for certificate of design approval for exterior changes to an existing building, also in the City Center Design Development District. Um, this has not come before you before, but um, is a renovation of the old Security Federal Building. And um, Craig Otto is also the architect on this building, so conveniently he is going to come up again and um, give a presentation. I don't know if anybody else wanted to present from your team. or. Okay, so I guess I can. <clears throat> so, twelve twelve thirty three Washington Street is a ten story office building that was completed in the mid nineteen fifties. Its original design was modern of concrete, stone, and glass. The building consists of two primary masses: a tall, narrow, solid tower and a large, lighter, and largely transparent box wrapped around it. The design used typical mid-century concepts of a heavy mass floating on a transparent base and was dramatic in its use of solids and voids. Throughout the last several decades, the building has been modified significantly. Stucco was applied to the exterior, removing the contrast between the clean, solid concrete forms of the more, and the more transparent box that clings to it. The windows were replaced completely. Moreover, the addition of stucco eliminated the visual layering of materials that define the separate forms and their relationship to each other. While the applicant extensively explored removing the stucco, it was unsuccessful. When so much of the original exterior material has been lost, it becomes more difficult to review renovations based on the integrity of the original design. The approach herein is to renovate the building in a way that recalls some of the original design concepts while modernizing it for its future use as a hotel. And then I'll let them beyond that. Uh, 
Uh, my name is Craig Otto. I'm the architect for the project. I'm sorry that you don't have a little more variety tonight with folks you get to speak to. Um, I'm here representing Raj and A.J. Champaneri. They're sitting right back here. They're brothers and partners in the hotel business. They own a number of properties, one of which is the Loft Hotel in, in the Vista right here. So they're already uh, good citizens of the city of Columbia in that regard, and they want to continue to be with this project. They bought this building with the intent, the original intent of restoring it pretty much back to its original condition. And I was very excited about that. You know, it, it, many of you are probably aware of the fact that there's quite a modern movement right now, particularly mid-century modern. This building was completed in 1954, right, in mid-century. Um, and it's a great example, the original building is a great example of that mid-century modern design. It was, I think it was very well done. Um, and what we wanted to do originally was uh, restore it, and the owners were, would seek tax credits to do so. Uh, they employed the services of Mashburn Construction to do a lot of exploratory uh, work, demolition, investigation, and that's been going on for months and months. And um, after removing small portions of some metal panels at the windows, uh, the ephus, uh, the stucco that you see there now, which is e ephus, I'm sure you're all familiar with, is a styrofoam-based stucco material that was glued. The stucco, uh, the styrofoam was glued directly. I say styrofoam, expanded polystyrene board, right? But anyway, uh, it was glued directly to the stone of the original building. I don't know what, uh, I apologize for insulting anybody who originally did this, but I don't know what they were thinking when they did that back in the Believe, we believe it was in the early 90s or late 80s. But they really kind of ruined the building. Um, the, the owners have taken off pieces of the stucco and they cannot get it back to the original, to its original finish without damaging the original finish. They've tried about three different methods for doing so, including chemical, grinding, chipping, all kinds of ways. And um, they finally came to the conclusion that they could not restore it without being such a great expense that it, would, it wouldn't be worth it. Um, so what our intentions now are to bring it back to uh, a mid-century but more modern look to complement what was there originally, but to you know, bring it to the to year 2018 or 25. Um, so that's what we've tried to do. I'd like, if I may, I'd like to just read something for you that was written by, we, we have a consulting architect and in, interior design firm that's working with us and they've been integrally involved in it with the interior as well as consulting on the exterior. And what uh, I'd like to read is that the proposed design for this project seeks to revitalize the essence of the original Security Federal Building while bringing it forward to today's day, a modern day. Modern material expressions and methodology of breaking up the building's largest facade, which is that back facade you're looking at there, are derived from the existing elements of the building design that make it unique. In this fashion, the new design is meant to bridge the gap between the old and the new. Horizontal composite faux wood panels that you see directly above each window uh, line are used to tie into the interior, which we also are using some wood material on the interior uh, to bring warm wood accents both on the interior and exterior uh, and including in the new lobby. Uh, these bands also reinforce the horizon horizontality of the original green stone bands that, that is where that is. They used to be green, uh, and, but they're you know, obviously too damaged to restore as I stated earlier. We felt it was important to maintain the original placement of the sign that's where the security federal sign was, and so now we're putting the Holiday Inn sign there. And the vertical green band that you see is there. That is a, a those are louvers for mechanical rooms uh, that just kind of blend into the building now. You don't really see them, but they're there. And uh, we thought that to directly to the right of them, you see some gray portion. A raised aluminum panel system is proposed to emphasize the building's proportions and to create depth on that facing, that west facing facade. The difference in depth between the existing louvered recess, the aluminum panel and the wood band create a subtle interplay of shadows that will change throughout the day, bringing life to this previously blank wall. It's a very large blank wall. And at night, we propose that the existing recess would be illuminated uh, with the iconic Holiday Inn green light. 
that will illuminate the building at night and make an attractive and memorable uh, building that the public will see. This will emphasize the same features of the building that were used to engage the public in its historical context, and the new materials will bring that ideology into the modern age of architecture. Um, I think that's well said, and I didn't want to bore you by reading it, but I didn't want to miss any of those points. So our intention is to keep, uh, and, and some of this was our meeting with Lucinda as well, the corners have that strong white vertical band on, at the corner. That's taken, our cue is taken directly from the original building. The horizontal bands under the windows are, were, were similar in color in that there was a, it was sort of a muted green contrasting with the white. We're using gray, which is a muted color to contrast with the white corners. Uh, but the wood faux, band, band, faux wood band underneath is to give it a little more character, again, a little more modern. Um, so we've, we've kept a lot of what was there originally, but we've added a little to it to make it better. We, we've also added a little bit of height to the parapet wall. Th there is literally no parapet wall in the building now. I've walked on the roof and I don't get within 25 feet of it because I feel like I'm going to fall. Uh, because there is no protection whatsoever. So we're adding a parapet wall for, for the architecture as well as for screening HVAC units and for safety. Um, so that gives it a little more height at the top, which again makes it look a little more modern, a little more contemporary. Uh, we're adding a canopy on the Washington Street side that's a relatively simple horizontal canopy with uh, overhead supports uh, and uh, the Holiday Inn uh, sign. The other two sides or back uh, are, are fairly simple. There's, there's, no, there's no real architecture over there other than the vertical and horizontal bands that are very strong. So that's carried all the way around the building. And, and on the, if you look at that elevation right there on the far left, you see those faux wood bands sticking out. I don't think they're going to really project out that far. They're, they're going to be much closer to the, to the building than that appears to be projected out about a foot. They will, they will probably only project out inches rather than a foot. So that won't be as strong as, as it appears. Are those, are those the band, are those, I wonder if those are the bands within the window wall or are they the bands that are associated with the uh, concrete wall, which would be sticking out further? I mean, That's in correct. other words, they may be further they are. back. They're, they're That's not, they are. they're out on the face of the, what is now EFIS. Right. Um, That's, I think, what you're seeing in the elevation that you were referring to sticking out. I think it's what's on the white, not what's, you can see how it steps back into the windows? Yes. So. That's correct. That makes that, sense. That is true. Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. No, you're, you're absolutely right. We also added, uh, in those white vertical corners, we've added a little recessed uh, niche in the wall. Just again, it, we just felt like it added a little more character to the corner and made it a little less plain. Mm -hmm. um, one of the cool things about the mid-century modern architecture was that it was, in, in retrospect, it was somewhat plain, but that was the, sort of the point. Um, and, and although it's very attractive, we're just trying to make it a little less plain at this point. So. Before we move on to uh, the commissioners, is anybody here that wanted to speak for or against the project? And I'm sorry, have you been sworn in? No, not yet. I just did sign in. My name is Asia Champanary. Promise to tell the truth. Promise to tell the truth. And if you could just repeat your name for the uh, record. My name is AJ Champanary. I'm one of the owners of the property. I uh, just wanted to let you know that the parking of this spot facility is also secured with the city center parking right next door, Sumter Street uh, parking deck. We've secured the parking. Just wanted to give you that information. So. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any comments or questions from the commissioners? I have a question for the architect. <clears throat> the, uh, the Security Federal, um, the office building, so to speak, is adjacent to the parking garage. That's the city parking garage, correct? Yes, sir. How far apart are the two buildings? Uh, I measured it one time, and I believe, if I recall correctly, 19 feet, so around 20 feet. Okay, <clears throat> based on the type of construction of this building, like 2B or? Uh, it's going to be, one, if I recall correctly, I, I have that in my files, but I think it's going to be 1A or 1B. I can't remember right now. So <clears throat> the windows I'm concerned about facing the garage. So with that in mind, I'm not sure what 1B is. Is it 10 feet? Well, there's, there's different 
distances based on the percentage of the wall that can have glass. And we did an analysis on that. And that wall is allowed to have up to 45% uh, of its wall can be uh, glazing exposed to that parking lot or parking garage rather because of the separation distance. Uh, and if I, and, and again, we, we have a, it worked out to be almost exactly 45% that we actually have that is glazed on that side. So we, we've addressed that. We've met with Jerry Thompson a number of times on this project and discussed the windows specifically. On the front facing Washington Street, we have no issues because of the public way. And on the back facing the back alleyway behind um, that project back there, I can't remember the name of it. Um, that's the public way, so there's no issues there. This side that you're looking at right here is, is pretty much property line based and, and uh, Mr. Thompson and us agreed that we would replace that glass with fire rated glazing on this side of the building and, that, and only on this side. The other three sides are, are, are clear, they're fine based on separation distance. Thank you. And, and that's really outside of our purview. I think it's a, it's a prudent question, but I, we assume that uh, the official having jurisdiction has uh, reviewed this and you're reviewing it with them and that uh, the code, fire codes are met, but he, he thank has. you. We've, we've met a number of times about a number of issues that we have. And just so you know, there's, there's only one current, uh, currently only one exit stair in this building. How it got built that way, I don't know, but you know, because we can't do that now, codes today, but we're adding a whole other set of stairs inside the building, cutting a hole down through the whole building and adding another set of stairs. So we'll have two stairs. There are going to be uh, 10 guest rooms per floor, nine floors of that, so that's 90 guest rooms. The ground floor level is all lobby and dining, uh, a kitchen and offices, and the basement is fitness room, meeting room, laundry, some ancillary spaces. It, it, it actually works pretty well uh, to, to get everything in. Little, little tight. It's, kind of, it's sort of like a boutique holiday inn. Yes, sir. I have a point of entry. Uh, security Center had a vault at one time, didn't they? Had a what? They, they had a vault. Yes, the, yes, sir. It's there. Can you show me where it is on the plan? It's on the ground floor. I don't know if we have any floor plan. Uh, I don't remember if, you, if I gave you that. I'm not the ground floor, excuse me, it's, on the, it's in the basement. Um, well, if you go back and show the rendering, um, if you turned off of Washington Street and went down that side alley between the parking garage and the building. It's in the first floor or the basement? It's in the basement. Oh. And it's all, in the, it's all the way in the back right corner of the basement. So the furthest corner from where we're standing here looking at this rendering, uh, it's in that bottom corner of the basement. I don't think it has a vault door on it anymore, does it? It does. Oh, it still does? Okay. It's not one of those beautiful vaults with the big beautiful door that you would like no. to maybe have a cocktail lounge in. I didn't know if you were going to try to save it. It, it does. It's not going to be reused for anything glamorous. It's going to be a linen a storage closet. It's not in a good location. We okay. wish it, if it had been up on the upper floor, we could have maybe done something like that. But All right. no, sir. Um, quick Any questions that pertain specifically to our purview? <laughs> uh, signage, both the, the, the upper sign and the, the um, street level parapet sign. Is that backlit or internal lighting? And this could be for you as staff either way. Well, we're going to comply with whatever the ordinances and regulations are regarding that. I don't recall. I think that the Holiday Inn sign up high there is backlit, if I'm not mistaken. But I don't recall what the uh, regulations are. Um, for city center, um, you can do either halo illuminated, I can't, they can't be individually illuminated channel letters. Of course, this will get a sign permit at some point. Right now, it's sort of just an indication of where the signage will go. Then there are um, skyline provisions. So if, and I forget, I forget how many floors it has to be, but for signs that are on the top of a tall office building, they can be internally illuminated just because that's the only way they'd be visible. So I don't think we've gotten to that point yet. We, we but um, they'll certainly have to comply with the design guidelines. Okay. Thank you. Good question. So if, if there were for some reason some aspect where they were not intended to comply with the design guidelines, that particular aspect of the project would come back to the DDRC, right? Right, 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 right. Okay, very good. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Craig, I, again, I, you know, I would say, and I, I would really uh, place this original building, uh, even though it was built in 1954, really more almost as a um, international style, uh, just in terms of the architectural language. And I, you know, what's been, been interesting, as you say, lately, in the past 20, 
25 uh, years is to watch uh, architects reinterpret the international style with uh, a, a higher degree of, of uh, detail, which I think this does well, uh, and especially given the limitations uh, that uh, um, come with some of the renovations that have been done. I, I think this uh, takes it back in, in, a, in an interpretive way to the original intent in a, in a very interesting way. I, you know, it's, for me, it's interesting looking at the historic photos. You can see uh, the value of a design development review commission when you see what's not there in the context of this building any longer. But um, I've, I think this is a, this is a, commendable, um, a commendable proposal for revitalizing uh, what was a pretty good international style building in its own right uh, and uh, in my opinion improves uh, upon that original design so i i think this is this is a good thing for the neighborhood well thank you very much i appreciate that uh, compliment and if you if you go by there and look at it as it exists now you'll drive right by you won't see it it just blends in like you wouldn't believe you wouldn't even notice that it looks like the parking garage next door there you go um, uh, so to give it a new life like day. Sir? I have been noticing it every day. Okay, good. Well, now you do, right? Ar architects always notice that when it looks, it's always looked like it had a lot of potential. Yeah, see, I, th I think it's going to give it a new life, that's for sure. Thank you. Yes, sir, thank you. Would somebody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion again. All right, thank you. Uh, 1233 Washington Street. Um, I want to um, recommend approval of your request. Um, and according to the staff, finds that the proposal substantially meets the guidelines in Section 5.9. Um, I rec the staff recommend approval of your request. Or exterior changes? Oh, that's what it is. Okay. I, I, I'm making a motion to set the guidelines and to recommend approval of the of request of, for exterior changes. 1233 Washington Street. I'm going to start over. I'm all, uh, I want to recommend approval of the request if the staff finds that the proposed substantially meets the guidelines in section 5.9, building addition, renovations, and demolition of the city and a design development for the exterior conditions. Uh, to 1233 Washington Street. That is 1233 Washington Street. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Bocknight. Yes. Mr. Broom. Yes. Mr. Daniel. Yes. Ms. Fuller Wilt. Yes. Mr. Wynn. Yes. Mr. Savory. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, and I believe we have other business. Thank the you. Other, Thank yeah. you. So the other business, I guess we need somebody to make a motion. Oh yeah. You want to introduce our other business, then I'll ask for a motion. I guess the, the other business is to go into executive session, so if y'all want to do that and then we'll come back here to adjourn the meeting after that. And we have, uh, you'll see here, uh, specific language suggested for the motion. If somebody would like to read this motion, and uh, then we'll take a vote, second, take a vote. I can read it. I make a motion that the DDRC go into executive session for the receipt of legal advice relating to those claims as stated in the agenda pursuant to South Carolina Code Section 30-4-70A2. Is there a second? Assuming no discussion, could we have a vote, please? 
Mr. Bachnight? Yes. Mr. Broom? Yes. Mr. Daniel? Yes. Ms. Fuller Wilt? Yes. Mr. Wynn? Yes. Mr. Savory? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. We'll go into executive session now. Don't know exactly what the procedure is, but uh, we're going to come out of executive session now. No action was taken. So I think with that, we'll just. Okay. Could I have a motion to come out of executive session? Second? Second. Uh, do we need a vote? We we'll just do that. All in favor? Yes. yes. Aye. Okay. With that, then, could I have a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Most, uh, meeting adjourned.